What's going on guys? This is James Allen. You are watching part two of the series on how to put a website on the internet computer. In part one, we went over the process of how to configure your uh, directory, your folders, your canister assets, how to connect that canister folder to an actual canister you've created on an NNS, how to link them. And of course, after building the website, we covered how to deploy it. In this episode, however, we're going to talk about how to uh, point that link that your website has on the internet computer, how to get your domain to point to that link, because chances are you have a domain somewhere at a domain register somewhere. Uh, I use GoDaddy, but you have a domain somewhere that you would like uh, your website to be uh, uh, your, pointed to, your canister website to be pointed to. So how do we do that? So in this episode, that's what we're going to cover. As a reference documentation, we're going to use using custom domain. Let me um, set up my phone. I'm going to record my screen and go over the documentation with you. Uh, but the documentation is called using custom domains. I'm going to leave a link in the description if you want to read the docs yourself, but we're going to go over it together. <clears throat> so what it ultimately boils down to is three steps. So to, to get your domain to work on an IC, it's really just a three step process and let's cover them. The first one is to configure the DNS record of your domain, right? So when you have a domain, uh, whatever register you're using, you could uh, configure the records there. So uh, the internet computer wants you to add three records. They want you to add, I'm going to read it, add a CNAME entry for your domain pointing to customdomain.icp1.io. So custom domain is going to be the name, the name of your website. So in my case, it's cityscape.com.icp.io such that all the traffic destined to your domain is redirected to the boundary node. So the first one is a CNAME record, okay? Add a text entry containing the canister ID to the canister ID subdomain. So they give an example here, canister ID dot custom domain. So the second one is a text record, okay? And the last one is another CNAME record. Add a CNAME entry for the Acme Challenge subdomain. Acme Challenge .custom domain pointing to Acme Challenge .custom domain .icp .io in order for the boundary nodes to acquire the certificate. So the last one is a C name which is related to the Acme Challenge. And this uh, this paragraph is not very useful. However, they have an actual example for you in a documentation. If you look at the configuration table that they give you, so let's scroll down. That makes more sense. So if you look at the DNS configuration, you're going to see that the record type is CNAME and the host is going to be the at symbol, right? And then the value you're going to give it is your custom domain dot ICP one dot IO, right? So if your custom domain is joebob.com, you're going to have joebob.com dot ICP one dot IO. And for the host, you're going to have at and the record type is CNAME. The second record is a text record and the host is going to be underscore canister ID. And then what you're going to do is you're going to paste the canister ID as a value. And where do you get the canister ID? You go to the NNS and right at the top corner, you copy that canister ID and you enter it as the value for the TXT record. Again, go to the NNS, copy that little canister ID and paste it as a value for the text record. And the host is going to be underscore canister slash ID. The last one is a C name, another C name record. You're going to, you're going to um, uh, enter that C name record and the, the host is going to be Acme challenge underscore Acme dash challenge. And the value is going to be underscore Acme dash challenge dot your domain. So in my case is cityscape.com, but if it's joebob.com, you're going to have joebob.com dot icp2.io, right? So very straightforward, just wherever you see the foobar.com, replace it with your domain.com. And in my case, um, I have GoDaddy. I use GoDaddy as my domain registrar and GoDaddy does not allow you to change CNAME, to add CNAME record. And because of that, you're going to have to let some other service manage your domain. You're gonna have to um, uh, transfer your domain to another service. You don't have to move it from GoDaddy, but you're gonna change the name server so that 
you let another service manage your domain so that you could enter the records necessary. And in the case, I use Cloudflare. I basically um, uh, use Cloudflare to manage my domain. And all you have to do is change the name servers. There is a documentation for it if you want to know how to change your name servers, how to import um, uh, your domain on GoDaddy to Cloudflare. Uh, there's a documentation called DNS configuration. I just followed the steps in that documentation and I changed the name servers on GoDaddy to Cloudflare and that allows me to, let, to, to use Cloudflare to manage my domain and then I enter these uh, records that you see on the table. These three records, I've entered them on Cloudflare and that was what did it for me. Uh, the DNS configuration um, guide is really simple. Um, if you're using GoDaddy and, and you want to um, move it to move the domain to Cloudflare, just follow that uh, documentation. And if you have any question, feel free to ping me in a comment section. But it's pretty straightforward. Just follow the documentation and transfer your domain to um, Cloudflare and then enter these records that you see on the table. Now, the next step that they want us to do, let's look at step two. The next step is really you're creating certain configuration files in your project so that um, uh, the environment knows that, you know, um, uh, this website is for that particular domain. So I'll read it. Step two, create a file named ic-domains in your canister under the dot well-known directory containing the custom domain. The, the dot well-known directory with the ic domain file should be placed within the canister files, not at the root. I'm going to say that one more time. The dot well-known directory with the IC domain files should be placed within the canister files, not at the root. So what does that mean? What this means is um, you're going to go to that folder. Remember the folder we've created? Uh, in that folder, you have the assets folder and you have the uh, dfx.json and the canister dot underscore IDs dot JSON. So you're going to go inside the assets folder right go inside the assets folder and you're going to create a directory called dot well known inside the assets folder that has your image folder and your index html styles that um, uh, css you know what i'm talking about you're going to create a directory there called dot well known and i use terminal i just navigate um, uh, inside the uh, assets folder using terminal i just cd it into the assets folder and then I created a directory of dot well known by using a make dir command. So mkdir dot well known. So I make directory dot well known. And inside that directory, right, you're going to create a file called ic dash domains, right? You're going to create a file called ic dash dash domains. And, you know, I did that using a touch command. So I just did touch dot, I mean, touch ic dash domains so just a touch command on terminal should create that file for you and within that um, uh, file you're going to put all the domains and subdomains uh, that you want to use for that website for me it's just cityscape.com so i'm just going to paste cityscape.com inside the ic dash domains file uh, but for you if you have subdomains for your website put the subdomains but in my case i don't have the subdomains if you if you go to the actual example that they give you right they, they give you a concrete example right if you scroll down to it you see that it's a step one create the ic dash domains file within the following content in the well-known directory so inside the well-known directory you have the ic dash domain file and then you have foobar.com so in my case it was just cityscape Dot com. Uh, so just type your domain inside that IC domain um, file. This, the, the second thing we have to do is we have to create another JSON file within um, uh, the canister folder. So move up one directory, right? You're no longer in a well-known directory. You're going to, you're inside the assets directory again, right? And you're going to create a file called uh, .ic-assets.json. So I use terminal, uh, so I just uh, move up one directory and then type touch.ic-assets.json. So that file is created inside my assets folder. And within that file, you're just going to copy and paste um, uh, this object that they have for us where it says match uh, quote well known and ignore file false. So just copy that and paste it inside the IC the .ic 
slash assets dash assets dot json file just paste that in there and you should be good the last step is actually really easy uh step three is you basically register uh your domain now with the boundary nodes of internet computer and you do that with a curl command right uh as you can see th there's a curl command right there on my screen uh all you have to do is where it says name replace it with uh your domain um uh, I, I do want to say too that you might want to deploy um, that assets. Uh, the, the 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 you might want to redeploy that canister again because you just added new files, right? You added the dot well known directory. You've added the uh, the IC domain file, and you know the the other one. What was the name? Uh, the IC dot assets dot JSON. So you might want to um, uh, do a Git push, if you have a local repository, I mean, a, a, a remote repository, you might want to push that on Git. And more importantly, you might want to, you want to deploy that to the IC. So do a DFX deploy, uh, flag network IC, flag no wallet again to, to, to upload those new files you've created, the dot well-known directory and the, the two files that are involved. And then after that, you want to register um, your domain with the boundary node and you you do that with a simple curl command and you could see that curl command right here I'll paste it for you guys to see here just replace where it says name with the domain and once you do that you want to actually check to see if um, if the boundary node registered it so when you when you do that curl command right um, if it's successful the boundary node is gonna give you a uh, 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 request ID result. It's basically going to give you like a a, a a number, like a serial number, uh, so that you could check if your request has been uh, successful. Because it takes time for the boundary node to register your domain, and you could check it. Let me see. There's a there's another curl command. Yeah, there we go. You could do another curl command, and all you have to do is um uh, is basically uh, an icpo.io registration, and where it says request ID, paste that request ID that you have gotten when you um, uh, register your domain. It's going to give you a, a, an ID. Paste, remove the request that ID, underscore that ID, and paste the actual ID that um, the original uh, registration request gave you because it's going to send you a, 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 an ID as a response, as part of a response. And if it's successful, it's going to say available. You're going to see a, a, a result that says available. Uh, meaning that the, the boundary nodes now know your domain. Now, I am going to say that it took me some time. Um, it took me some actual time to um, uh, get an available response from the domain. I think I had to do, I had to register it a few times. I think I did it like maybe two or three times. Um, but maybe I had made a syntax error or something when I did the curl command. But after like the third try, I got the request uh, ID. Um, uh, I got a request ID number. And then uh, I, th I think after like five minutes, uh, I, I did another curl command to check if my request ID was processed correctly and it gave me an available result. And I kid you not, once it was available, I went to cityscape.com and saw uh, my website on chain. It, everything was just fine once the boundary node gave me an available result. So I hope this was useful. It's again, a three-step process. Add the three records that uh, internet computer uh, tells you to put on your domain service. If your register does not allow you to use CNAME to add CNAME records, make sure you switch to Cloudflare. And there's a guide on how to do that. Um, I'm going to leave the documentation to that guide. I think it's called DNS configuration. I'm going to leave a link to that if you need to migrate to Cloudflare. But once you add those three records, it's pretty easy. Um, uh, after that, you're going to add the files that you need to add, uh, the directory. You're going to go inside the assets folder, create the dot well-known directory. And within that dot well-known directory, you're going to have a file called the IC-domains. Paste your domain inside that file and then move back up inside the assets folder, right? And then you're going to create another one. I think it's called, um, uh, I, can't, I can't remember the name of that file for some reason. Let me look at the doc one more time. Uh... It's called .ic-assets.json. So inside the assets folder, you're going to create that file and then paste 
the blurb, the object they want you to paste in there. That's copy and paste. That's pretty easy. And then once you deploy um, uh, those new files to the IC, you register your domain using that curl command. Just make sure where it says name, you put your domain name. Um, uh, and then you'll get uh, an ID number, like a Q ID number. And then after like five minutes, do another curl command with that ID number to check if the boundary node indeed register your domain. And once it says available, congratulations, um, uh, your, your, your domain is now pointing to the IC and your website is fully on chain. So I hope this helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. And of course, if you want me to build your website for you and put it 100% on chain, I could do, do it all for you for a fee. Uh, you could just basically pay me to build your website and put it 100% on chain for you. Could that, that's, an, that's an easier way if you don't want to do all this technical work. Just message me on Instagram or Discord. I'm going to leave the social blanks for you to see. And of course, you're more than welcome to join my developer study group. Uh, currently, I believe it's at four ICPs a month. It's basically $30 a month. You just pay in ICPs. We meet once a week to study on how to become competent blockchain developers. So whether you're going to hit me up to build a website for you fully on chain or to join my study group, you're going to hit me on my socials. In any case, my misfits, that's all I have for you in this episode. Don't forget to press that like button and support me on Patreon. I will see you next time.